Hey everyone, I'm Patrick. And I'm Jelle. We are a German couple traveling Australia. And today we're going to show you our tiny home on wheels. Now, our home is a Mercedes Sprinter 519 long wheelbase, the cab chassis version. And we got it from auction and it used to be an ex ambulance. Let's go check it out. So we've got our retractable step here. So let's start with our tiny kitchen. We have a sink that is like normal size and a dish rack right next to it, which is really handy because Patrick is lazy and doesn't want to dry the dishes. So you can just put it on here and it dries pretty quickly because usually it's hot in Australia. Then right next to it, we have this, um, it used to be for plants, but we use it for our sponge and soap, dishwash liquid. And above the sink, we have a little shelf with like stuff for breakfast, like chia seeds, acai, coffee. This is the most important one, it's mm -hmm. Nutella. Patrick's favorite and a bit of tea and spices. So that's perfect for breakfast. Um, let's go here. We have our paper towels hanging here, which is really handy because usually we need them quickly and then we can just take them off. We tighten them with a string because sometimes when we're driving on really bad dirt roads, it just <laughs> rolls off and then everything's lying on the floor and we don't want this to happen again. <laughs> so right next to this, we have a bunch of knives. Um, we screwed the knife block in so it can't move and we never had any issues with them falling out. This is our little bread box basket and we actually baked bread today in our air fryer which is a really nice thing to have in a van. <laughs> um, so what we do, um, we have wax wraps, we made them ourselves. We actually made a video about it, we can link it in the description below. And then we just wrap it in um, in wax wraps so it keeps fresh for a bit longer so what we love as well is just these little hanging baskets so we put fresh fruit and veggies in there right now there are a lot of potatoes because we love making fries in the air fryer <laughs> which is our new thing and um, it's hanging off this shelf and so far we didn't have any issues, even on bad roads. We have a bunch of power plugs in here. So this is our 240 volt system um, running off the inverter at the moment. And this is our 12 volt socket. So we have the normal cigarette plug. Then we have two USB ones. We actually have a um, switch as well, but we don't use it yet. And then we can see our voltage here, which is really handy. So we can see when it's dropping and we're close to not having any power left. So the next thing, maybe you're wondering why we have two seats in here. So um, this is a four seater. We have two in the front and two in the back. And we actually left them in because we were planning on having a lot of visitors from back home friends coming by and we needed four seats for it so they could travel with us um, as you see we only have one queen size bed in here but we have a queen size mattress air mattress and a tent so they could sleep in the tent easily or on the floor because there's a lot of space <laughs> yeah they slept on the floor before. oh yeah I did I had a nap <laughs> it's nice and comfortable what's in here Yale? so 
The good thing about this seat is you can move it around however you want. So you can slide it back and forth. You can even swirl it. <laughs> Which is really handy because now when we want to use the drawers back here, we can do that easily. So the top one is our knives, forks, spoons, everything we need. The usable straws. The second one is some kitchen appliances as well. This is our potato press, but we use it for spätzle, which is a Swabian dish we really like. And you can't get a spätzle press in Australia, so we use this and it works very well. And underneath here, there is another one. And we got lots of stuff, like this is for muesli, a chopping board, baking forms, a coffee thing. Yeah, a lot of stuff is in here. There's a lot of space because it goes all the way to the end, which is 60 centimeters. How do we lock these when we go driving? Yeah, so it's pushed to open and then we have these locks as well. So they don't open at all. They're pretty safe. So under the bed, we, got, we have some storage, which is really handy. So... This is like little cubes and we put in clothes. So every one of us has a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of cubes. Maybe I have one more than Patrick. <laughs> Maybe just one and more. And it's not just one, there's another one behind it and a little one in between. So that's really handy. And we love this setup and we we made this string in front so they don't fall out. But they never did. <laughs> so we can move the seat back here. More space. All right, our bed, it is a queen size bed. That means it's, it's over two meters long and 155 wide. So we have a lot of space and it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. We actually bought a mattress of Ikea, which was only 300 bucks. It's a foam mattress, but we are very happy with it. It's not too heavy and it's really comfortable. You should ask Patrick because he never gets out of bed in the morning. <laughs> I always sleep till as long as I can, till I, <laughs> till I get kicked out. Exactly. And we put the bed this way, so I actually sleep sideways instead of yeah, the it's long like way. This, and it's really comfortable. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> so behind the bed, we have uh, some more space. So we put our laptops or phones when they charge, a bin, our tablet, whatever we have standing around. We put it behind the bed. Then in the back here, we have some more 12 volt outlets and a switch that turns out on these little lights. Whoop. Hello, Patrick. Hey. <laughs> and what about those fans? Yeah, there's, these are really handy actually because these are 12 volt dual fans so we can point them in the direction we want to so we don't have to fight about it <laughs> and it was really handy because we were up north in darwin and it was super hot it was over 40 degrees every day at night 30 degrees and we couldn't sleep without the fans yeah and i'd wake up in the middle of the night and yeah they would have both fans pointing at her all of a sudden i don't know how that happened <laughs> So now we come to this little area. We put a shelf up here because we always had so many things next to the bed. We wanted to have them next to the bed actually. So we put them up here. That's our little thermostat and time and humidity thingy, which is really handy. But when the van's moving a lot, sometimes it loses the connection to the power and it doesn't work anymore. But yeah, you just have to push it and it turns back on. This thing is Patrick's little magic box. <laughs> um, that was a lot of work. So what this is, um, this runs our aircon and blower actually. So this is the aircon unit. And when we want to run the, the blower, we just turn on here and then we can decide how strong we want it to be 
And we could also add this one, which is fresh air. Woo! <laughs> which is really nice. And then we have these other two switches. So um, the top one is for heating the van. So when we drove for a bit and the coolant is really hot, we can run this one and it pumps coolant onto into the lines. And then when we run the blower, it blows hot air into the van, which is really nice when it's cold outside. And we can also run it while driving, it doesn't matter. And the bottom one is for the aircon. So it only works when the car is running, but we can turn it on and then it gauge, engage, engages <laughs> the clutch, the compressor clutch. And it's belt driven, so it only works when the car is running, but um, when we turn it on and the lines are really cool, we can run it a bit longer on the blower and it's still cool air coming out. That was a lot of work and um, it took us a long time to figure it out, but now it works and we're happy about it. <laughs> Especially Patrick. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's proud of it. I'm proud of being able to figure that out. Yeah, what we installed right next to it is some like a tiny little hook so we can put our charging cables up here, headphones jewelry and what is really important nowadays a mask it's not that you don't need it that much in Australia but since we had to quarantine what we're doing at the moment um, in Western Australia we we had to have masks for the COVID test because we had to get tested twice so on top of that we have these overhead cabinets on this side and on the other side they were already in here when we bought the van, so we left them in there because they're super handy and we can store whatever in there. So we have these full of clothes, this one is full of medical stuff. <laughs> and the one right next to it is more like cosmetics and shampoo and whatever we need. And there are caps in there and tape and measuring tape and other stuff and we have cleaning stuff in here and some food and yeah so we use them all and they're really handy and we love that about the van that's one of the only things we left in there actually the Besides other thing, the seats yeah <laughs> the other things we left in there are the seats let's come to the seat there is a little it's kind of hidden because you don't notice it at first but it's a little cabinet you can put stuff in there like Gatorade <laughs> milk or whatever you want to store in there all right well, and these seats are actually street legal so there's seat belts on them so you can sit people here yeah we traveled with four before um COVID happened but yeah we have a little secret spot as well <laughs> which is under the seat so you can just open it and then we got garlic and onion in there because it's cool and dark and they last longer <laughs> All right, let's come to this side. We have some, it's the same system like on the other side. We have glasses, plates. We even have a wine thingy in here. That we've and, used once. <laughs> yeah, and nothing ever broke, which is amazing because we'll show you where we took our van on like the wor worst roads. And still everything's fine. We have a tiny little one here for like little glasses, espresso cups, more like small things. Then we have this um, water canister. canister. <laughs> water, water canister in here. It's secured with the string. Nothing ever happened as well. And it's just drinking water. Usually we have this turned around so this part's at the bottom, but it leaks. So, so yeah. like, it's upside down now. It's upside down now. <laughs> <laughs> this one's full of plates and cups and whatever, bowls, anything as well. We use this one. It's actually like a plate holder from IKEA and it's really handy because they can't slide around. They're pretty secure on there, which is really nice. Close it again. Whoop. On top of that, we have a microwave which is an oven as well and we love it because we love baking patrick loves cinnamon scrolls especially the recipe that comes close to cinnabons if you know that 
and I love making banana bread and so it uses a lot of power it uses 2000 watts so we usually can't run it um, on the inverter or on our power system because we don't have enough so when we're plugged in we can use it and then <laughs> we keep baking all night long <laughs> yeah it's really nice to have an oven and a microwave in one device how do we use the microwave oh when we're driving we can just turn it on because yeah. we have enough power <laughs> so we can run it on a sunny day for maybe like a maximum of a minute yeah um but if not we usually just turn on the car and use the alternator as well and that keeps it running it's almost the same with our air fryer it uses 900 watts and we've we ran it like yesterday for at least half an hour when the sun was out. It was working perfectly fine. So we have a 2000 watt in water, so that's not the problem. Um, but yeah, after like 40 minutes at least, <laughs> the power shuts down. So we have to run a generator or plug in or run the car to actually keep baking. Yes, so now we come to this part. That's another area where we can store kitchen appliances. It's a small Bialetti French press. We even have like um, a hand mixer. We have a blender, a kettle with everything in there, honestly, <laughs> so much. We have a mini food processor and we have beer glasses. We got as a present in Germany, really nice so much space because it goes all the way until here so you can just store it behind here and then underneath we have two drawers we built ourselves so the top one is usually filled with water now with a bit of lemonade as well and the bottom one <laughs> most important part of the car <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty empty at the moment but that's our wine drawer Ooh, which is really nice fancy. yeah it's hidden and it doesn't use much space and it looks cool if it's full now it's pretty empty <laughs> and it's the same system it's um, push to open and then we have these little things securing it but if one thing we would actually change probably we wouldn't use push to open anymore because when the, the van's shaking a lot on corrugated roads for example it shakes and it wants to open because it's like a push so what we would probably use next time is the soft close because apparently it works a lot better just as a tip so now we come to our little fridge it's a 95 liter fridge and it's a 200 volt one so it's not a 12 volt fridge it's not very full at the moment but we can store a lot of stuff in here so usually when it's completely full it lasts us for two weeks and we love our veggies <laughs> you have to know that there's a little freezer which doesn't work properly so we can't really freeze something in there so what we usually do we use it as a fridge compartment yeah which is cold, nice as well. cold fridge compartment yeah he usually puts his beers in there <laughs> yeah and when we get ice cream we just eat the whole thing <laughs> exactly right next to it we store a little picnic table we love it because you can just put it on the bed like this and then have breakfast in bed obviously on top of this like um, top blanket because our bed shouldn't get dirty right Patrick <laughs> All right, this is our electrical cabinet. And actually it's Patrick's job to tell you what's going on in here. Because this is crazy, honestly. You have to know that an ambulance has a lot of wiring going on and a lot of stuff like the sirens, the whole gear they use in an ambulance. So look at this. Woo! All righty. So, put in a light here so I, whenever I work on this I can actually see stuff. So we have our 2000 watt inverter here. Um, it's connected, there's a positive stud and a negative stud here. Um, that actually connect down to the batteries which are under the car and you can access them from the outside. We'll show you that when we do the outside tour. So, 
There's a lot of wiring here that we don't really <laughs> use. This is all like ambu ambulance stuff, like the lighting, the ambo lights, the, the sirens and stuff, the communications uh, equipment. Um, so what's this? So these used to be plugs for the, they have uh, two computers here in this uh, slot right here. And they control the entire ambulance system, including the lights, the the fans, the AC, everything that, you know, is electrical in the, in the ambulance. But they rip these out before you get to buy these at auction, or at least in some of them, they rip them out. So we had to figure all this wiring out ourselves. So we put it onto a little 12 volt, um, fuse like box. fuse box, the, the car with the normal car fuses, you can just pretty much access them here. And then you have your fuses in there You check them out. And we still have to label where our fuses go, obviously. So we know what, I mean, I know what we're talking about, but yeah, that sometimes has no idea what, what line goes where. Oh, sometimes I know more than you do. <laughs> what was it about the solenoid? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we have um, a power charger here. So this pretty much charges our batteries if we're plugged into shore power. Now, when we're plugged into shore power, we have a little outlet on, on the side of the van. We'll show you on the outside tour. And it actually, I hooked it up to this um, electrical, um, the electrical outlet here. And what we do is we have this one connected to the charger, the power charger. And whenever we want to change from inverter power to shore power, all we do is just unplug this plug right here. And this plug leads to our fuse box, which has 16 amp fuses. So in everything's protected in case there's a power surge or something. And then we just take this plug and plug it into here and then we're connected to shore power. So it's just a manual switch. We have to switch it over manually compared to people who have like an inverter charger. Um, and then we have our solar charge controller up here that pretty much gets our solar from our 250 watt solar panel at the top on the roof. And it connects it down to our battery. Um, it's pretty handy. It tells you like how much amps are coming in at the moment. And yeah. So that's pretty much our electrical cabinet. It looks really complex, but once you start figuring out some things and where all these wiring looms go, then it gets a bit easier to figure stuff out. Yeah, and we have this little switch on the outside where we can turn the inverter on and off. But usually it's running 24 seven because our fridge is running off the inverter. All right, let's turn this off. Whoop. Right next to this cabinet, we have some switches. So this one are the indoor lights. Check this out. So Very when you <laughs> when you see an ambulance, you notice that the light in there is really bright and they need it because they need to see everything. So that's why we have super bright LEDs all over the ceiling. We have some more switches here and that's basically the outdoor lights it's like work lights we'll show you outside and it's really handy because when you're parked somewhere it's dark you can just turn on the outdoor light and then it's bright outside we also use one of them for our reverse camera because the camera comes with a tiny LED and that's not enough if you have such a big van so we use the back light for that oh yeah and then here we have another switch right here here we have our fuel transfer so we can transfer from our spare tank into our main tank. We have a solenoid that connects our main, like our house batteries to our starter battery. So in case uh, our starter battery goes flat, we can actually charge it from our house batteries in the solar system. And we have a vent fan that's really loud. There we go. There we go, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the vent fan right here. And the last switch is supposed to be for the diesel heater whenever we do connect it. Yeah, it's not connected yet. This is um, kind of like a chalkboard. It's actually just a um, sticky acry acrylic thingy. And we've tried it. It works pretty well. <laughs> Friends of us <laughs> wrote this on here. And usually we have our to-do list on there. All right, right next to it, we have this little shelf. Um, where we store drinking chocolate, oats, almond, pasta, rice. It's a sugar replacement, flour, sugar, coconut oil. It's really handy because 
it's glass and we don't have to use that much, much plastic we can refill these and it's it's just nice to have them underneath we have two pictures hanging on the wall so how does that work we actually used um, velcro to stick them onto it so there's velcro on the wall and then we just put them on here and they hold on there this is our crawl through <laughs> to the front we have everything like all the curtains are actually attached with these little marine Fasteners. Fasteners, yeah. So you screw that into the wall and then you have to attach this one to the fabric, to your curtain, and then you can just put it on like this or take it off, which is really handy. And yeah, this leads to our front cabinet. And what do you think? Who has to crawl through here the most? What do you think, Gelle? Who has to crawl through here the most? Me. <laughs> and actually, I'm pretty good at it at the like now by now. But you should see Patrick doing it. It's so funny. Looks like an old man. Maybe maybe we can record it later and show you because <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. So we just close them for the night, and usually when we're driving around, we leave it open. Also, in our driver's cabin, we have our UHF radio up here, as well as. So, here's our UHF radio, so we can communicate with the truckers or with any four-wheel drivers. There's a little LED light that we hooked up that come, came with the um, ambulance, so it's a red light or a white light. So if Yale wants to read while I'm driving at night, she can read. Um, yeah, we have our normal sunglasses holder up here that we don't really use. Um, there's some nice storage space up above the, the cabin and then the driver's seats and we have our, we have a little center console in the middle and we put in the aftermarket radio ourselves because our Sprinter radio was broken. All right, we have one little hook here because Patrick always wear, wears caps and they're laying around everywhere. So when he was working outside on the van, I just installed this one. So now he can, that's his work cap. He's wearing his nicer cap at the moment. He can just put it on here and it's gone. <laughs> it's not laying around somewhere. Right next to it, we have toilet paper. Whenever you want to go to the toilet and there's no toilet in the public toilets or you have to go in the bush, you never know. We have the toilet paper here with a little shelf kind of thing so whenever i want to do makeup which happens maybe like once every three months <laughs> i can put it on here then we have this little mirror right next to it from ikea as well and our little alloy plant the plant pot is um, screwed in which is the only way to keep it safe with these little screws and then we put the alloy pens in here and we have mozzies in here. <laughs> so usually we have this um, curtain. It's a see-through curtain from Bunnings, which is a hardware store in Australia. And um, I sewed it to the size of the door because it's a pretty uncommon size. And all around it, we secured it with Velcro again. It was sticky Velcro. And we sewed the Velcro onto the curtain. And in the middle, we sewed in some um, magnets. So that's how it closes and because we don't use it all day long we just attach it to the sides and you can walk for easily but when it gets dark and there are a lot of mozzies we just close it and the mozzies can't get in here so what's good about see-through curtains they're a lot finer than actual mozzie nets you can buy in the stores so what we've noticed we had a normal mosquito net before that the tiny little flies came through it and it can't happen with this one because it's it's really fine. Also, what we love are our little wine glass holders. <laughs> Check it out. So we used tool clips and um, screwed them into like a wood wooden thing, and then we just take them out like this. We haven't had one break in all the roads we've driven down. 
Except yeah. for one time when I was washing the dishes and I dropped one into the sink and then it broke. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they survived everything. So if you're not sure how to how to store your wine glasses, that's a really good way because they won't break. There's no way. They're really safe. Just make sure that there's a little bit of space um, behind them so they don't um, knock on the wall all the time. Yeah. That's pretty nice actually. And we found like a, a chopping board that fits onto our sink, which is nice because sometimes we don't need to use the sink and we just want to cut something so we put it on top. But the sink is underneath, we can use it. Also, this um, water tap is really nice. We bought it off eBay, it wasn't actually really expensive because we can. I can show you. So we can use it like this. Small water coming out. We just fix the <laughs> fix the water pump. And then we can also use it like this and clean everything, which is really nice. Yeah, we like that. So we can turn it off here and we also have a switch on the side to turn off the power for the water pump. So it's not running constantly. So in case the the pressure switch doesn't work properly, we have no leaks and there won't be water coming out when we when we're sleeping during the night. Yeah, so this is most of our van. We have some more lights actually as well. Um, we'll show you when it's dark because these are LED lights and we have some around here all the way. And um, I can control them with my phone, which is really nice. So we can lay in bed and I can turn it on, off, change the color, change the brightness, which is really nice. We have some more behind here. So when we watch TV, TV, we don't have a real TV. We usually use the tablet and we have a little hook up here. So we hang it here, we lay in bed and we can watch TV. <laughs> and then we usually turn on the LED lights in like a nice color and it looks really comfortable and cozy. And whenever we run out of power, it happened in the past and it can happen. We have another fairy light right here and it's battery powered so we can run it no matter what <laughs> and Yele where do you store all your shoes <laughs> come on they're not too many <laughs> <laughs> so we built this shoe rack which is also a bench you can sit on this is like one of these fake fjords from Ikea for 15 bucks and it's really comfortable we already had a lot of people um, inside the van, so we usually we were playing card games. How do we do that? We unfold this table. <laughs> so one person can sit here. Um, we also use it for dinner when we don't eat outside. One person can sit here and we'll show you later, but we didn't plan on having a toilet in the van, which we regret because now we have one. It's one of these um, portable ones. And usually it's standing here, so we use it as another seat. And then two people can sit on here. So we can play at least with five people. And we have. We've actually played with six. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really nice. You can just put it back down when it's gone. And we have all the space. So on top, on, uh, under this bench, <laughs> we store our shoes. It's kind of like a normal shoe rack. Um, we have some trading boots and they don't fit in there, so we store them underneath. And when we have to secure bottles or like something, we just put them into the shoe so they can't fall. Yeah, we've done it many times already. Yes. Right next to it, we have this little thing. It's our beach ball ball. <laughs> And we have a bunch of bottles in here as well, mozzie spray, cider, <laughs> wine, and Yellow's favorite. chocolate baileys, exactly, just really nice. And on this side, we have, uh, it's easy to get it, so even Patrick can clean the floors, you know, it's, it's just here. You don't have to look for it or open any cupboards or stuff. On top of that, on top of that, there is our um, 
our switch. switch for the water pump we were talking about earlier this is our little bin we wanted to have it close to the door because i mean if it smells or usually it doesn't smell because we throw it out before but yeah it's close to the door which is really handy and we have a little um Fire, fire thingy? Ex fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher right next to the door, just in case anything burns or anything happens. It's easy to grab it. And what are these little things? In there? Yeah, I just saw this. It's like, we store a torch in there. Sunscreen, after sun, matches, more sunscreen. Yeah, it's just for small stuff. And also what is important in Australia, is that you have these um, bandages because in case you get bitten by a snake which you never hope but in case it happens you need them to wrap it around so the venom can't spread all over your body until help help arrives so that's why we have them right here right next to the door just in case we need them quickly so where do we cook Yale? we cook usually not inside because um we don't want to have to smell in here and usually it doesn't rain much in Australia. So we have a little butane stove in here, which is a one burner just in case. But we prefer cooking outside. I'll show you the kitchen. Right. We have this little side cabinet. It's really handy. It was already in there when we bought the van as an ambulance. Just open it. And this is our kitchen! <laughs> so we store all our food and baking stuff in these boxes. Some didn't fit, so they are stored pretty much everywhere. More better said, we have too much food. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we have this little spice rack from IKEA as well. So many people have it in their vans, even if they don't use it for spices. But it's really handy and some pots, pans, <laughs> flour. We have our little gas bottle here. So when we cook, we usually take it out and attach it to our burner. That's a three burner, which is really nice, but usually we only need two, but it's good to have three. So you just open it, attach a gas bottle and you can start cooking. Nice. And the gas bottle, um, storage here is actually completely sealed has like we had leftover seals from one of the doors we took out and we sealed all this with silicon all the, the cracks here so this is actually completely sealed off from the cabinet in case there is a gas leak we don't really want it coming inside so that was pretty important for us and, and what's in here is our water system yep so <laughs> Patrick will tell we'll you a bit about you, it show you how this water system works real quick uh, we At first we had this pump actually sit behind this bulkhead right here, behind the gas bottle storage, but it started leaking so we decided it's probably a good idea to keep it somewhere where you can see it. So we put it out here. Now we have our fresh water from our tank which is actually directly under here. Um, we actually used a storage box and just sealed it off with silicon. Um, and it's worked pretty well until we started going down lots of dirt roads and then started getting a couple holes in it. So it's pretty patched up right now. I'll but show you. <laughs> it, it's amazing that it still works, but we'll definitely change it out. So this is the water tank. And you can see the hole here, which is patched up. It works. It's actually 160 liters. We don't use it for that much water anymore and we'll replace it. But for now it works still fine. And can you see the gray water tank? No? Good, because we don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so we pretty much just set this up as like a complete system. So we have our, our output from our pump right here that comes in here. And we have a, a ball valve that you can shut off the pump from in case we're connected to um, water at a campground, which um, we can do on two stations, so either this one or this one. Um, these are both inputs or outputs. So this one goes to the other side of the van because that's where we have our electrical hookup as well. So we'll usually park that side to the power and water hookups if we are on a campground, which we pretty much never are. But <laughs> it's handy when you are filling up and the taps on the other side and you don't want to get out the long hose. Um, also, we have this one, which just pretty much goes down here, through here, and comes out right here. 
and you can pretty much pull this out, pull the cap off, and then you fill up, fill up right here. So you just connect your hose, open up this ball valve. Oh. <laughs> and there's some water left in there. <laughs> and yeah, you pretty much, that's where you fill it up. Or we also connect our outdoor shower to this. So we can pretty much, if we open up the pump again, and we open up the ball valve to this side, then we can use it as a shower and we connect our outdoor shower over there. Yeah, so this is the attachment where you can put in the shower. It's like a garden shower. Um, we'll show you in a video. And if we don't use that and we want to have a hot shower because we don't have a hot water system, we use our camping shower, <laughs> which we did today. Alrighty, so the other part of the water system is actually right here, which is the fill valve to the tank. So if we are using this as a fi to fill it up, we'll open up this ball valve and this ball valve. That way the water will come in here and back out here, which means um, it'll actually come in through here and down into the tank, filling up the, the, the water tank we have underneath. And, and when we do that, we do close off the pump just to make sure that the water doesn't go backwards through the pump. Uh, and then when we're done, we just pretty much turn these back on and then you have water which comes up here and we have a little Y valve and that goes up into our sink. And that's pretty much the only water that we have inside the van, so it makes it pretty easy. This is just the, the pull out part of the, the sink attachment. Yeah. And that's pretty much it for the water system. So now we'll show you how we hook up the shower real quick. So coming back to our garage. wonderful garage here. <laughs> So we have three compartments pretty much. We built it like this because we wanted to have supports under the bed, not just the whole big beam and then the bed has this big bow in it. So we put two supports and then we just have this big box right here that we have most of our stuff in with spare parts whatsoever. Um, here we keep our camping chairs, our picnic uh, blanket, our yoga mats whatsoever. <laughs> um, out here we have our other compartment where we have like our bike helmets, hiking boots, um, the other has her workout gear, her workout gear and, and extra fabric in here. Uh, we have our beer behind here, so it's nice and hidden, so nobody goes to steal it. <laughs> Very important for Patrick. Now you know our secret. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is pretty much our main garage, which is where we keep our tools, our electrical stuff. Patrick's mess. This is my, my spot. We actually have so much beer right now that we, we stored some beer in here. And we have our water, uh, extra water hoses here. And this is actually our outdoor shower. So we have an extra water hose here, 30 meters. Definitely recommend getting a 30 meter water hose. And then you always have to have a little bit extra because you'll get to that point where you'll lay out the 30 meters and you'll be missing one meter. <laughs> so you need to get the other extra hose out and then you just grab one of your um, hose joiner attachments, which we have we have a whole bucket full of attachments. So we have this one, which is good to attach to all the hoses. And then what you'll also need is a hose joiner like that. So you can just join the two hoses together and you can get those 31 meters that you need most of the time. And we also recommend getting a vandalism proof water tap key, <laughs> which we have, but we're not going to show you because yeah, we're not going to show you. No, no. <laughs> it's a secret. It's good to have. Just get it. It's 15 bucks. At, we got it at Bunnings and it's super easy to use. So now we're going to show you how to do the outdoor shower. So we pretty much just hook up our outdoor shower here. Press it on here. You have to be strong, Patrick. Come on. It's not in there yet. <laughs> nope. There we go. Now it's on there. <laughs> that was his workout for the day. <laughs> yep. Now I'm strong. And then you take this end of the hose, you bring it here to our extra attachment here, which you take off, connect it here. Then you put on your outflow. So it's now the water is being coming through the pump and out of, out of this one. And now you can just turn on your water pump. Water pump. You have water. Ooh, shower time! 
There you go. That's how you use the auto shower. Nice, huh? <laughs> All right, and we'll show you the rest of the outside of the van. So, um, we have a little storage cubby right here that we have our all our toilet chemicals in um, and our cleaning stuff for the toilet. So we have we have the the liquid chemicals and we have the tablet chemicals. Um, don't really notice a difference. I, I personally like the liquid one a bit better, but they're both actually pretty good. Up here we have some cleaning stuff and, and some uh, body wash. Um, and also um, we did the same thing like at the front door. These are our mozzie nets and so they can't come into the van. We just put these one, the bottom parts into the bed and then it's closed, closed for the mozzies. Oh yeah, most important part, <laughs> we have max tracks in case we get bogged. Did we get bogged we already? We have gotten bogged <laughs> twice already and these actually helped us out once. So <laughs> it's pretty important. Yeah, the other time we needed someone pulling us out. Yeah. So then back here we have a pull-out table. We can pretty much pull this out. It goes pretty far. I'm just gonna pull out here. Then we have a leg that we just attach here and then you can set up two chairs or you can even sit here like this and you know, enjoy a glass of wine or what we've done so far. Put that back in. Then we have our long boards here. We just attach them, put them on some hooks uh, and put some uh, anti-slip mat there so they don't get all scratched up. Um, and then we have another table here. So this is like our our bar table. So you can stand here, you know, drink some beers, have a conversation, <laughs> have a big party out here. <laughs> yeah, and then it's just the same concept as the ones that we have, the big table we have inside. Um, yeah. Did I miss anything on the back? Oh yeah, we have um, like clothes holders here that we, we have our sand-free towels hanging from there right now. But when we have to dry stuff, we'll put it up there. Uh, and we have all these uh, curtains on every every one of our window. They all fasten with the marine clips. Um, but we usually tie them up during the day, so we don't. So we have some light come into the van. So what's this behind here, Patrick? Oh, this is our um, clothesline actually. So this folds out completely into like one of those um, square clothesline things that have the, the, the clothesline going around like that. Um, and we actually use it when we do laundry at laundromats and we'll go park in the parking lot with a lot of sun. Um, unfold this, hang everything up and yeah, it works pretty well. It ex it's actually broken once, but we kind of fixed it. <laughs> works pretty well. Alrighty, then we have another compartment on the side of the car, which is like our dirty, nasty garage. So here we have our jerry can with extra fuel, which is empty empty right now. Uh, we have an, a spare gas bottle in case we run out of the one that we have in the front. We'll put this one there and put the empty one here so we can swap them out. Yeah, you have to know that in Australia, distances are huge. So you sometimes you're not able to get to the next like gas station or hardware store to exchange the gas bottle. Yep. So you don't want to go a couple days without eating hot food. So that's why we just have an extra one. It doesn't take up that much space in here. Uh, and then we just have a bunch of extra stuff in here that we don't really need. Um, just like uh, spray paint that we use to spray, spray paint our logo on the top, terps, um, extra butane bottles for our um, our gas stove inside we have some jumper leads a card battery charger degreaser vinegar um diff oil what else is in yeah. there coolant carb cleaner cooling system flush and here we usually have our um caravan 15 amp um hookup cable in here as well and then we have a little adapter so we can actually hook up to a normal 10 amp power plug and then it goes to a 15 amp um, connector for our, um, to, to put the 15 amp cable that we have that we connect to our 15 amp plug. Um, just a little thing we made, um, or my dad made for us when he was here traveling with us. Really nice of him. Thanks dad. <laughs> And then we have in here also our fill filler for our spare tank. So our spare tank is pretty much under the car right here. And you just pretty much open this up and yeah, you can fill up the tank. Um, it takes 
it's supposed to take 65 liters, but we usually put like around 40 in it because then it starts getting pretty full and um, yeah. So it's like having two extra jerry cans under your car. This is the spray tank. Yep. We attach the same way we attach the water tank. Alrighty. Then here we have our power outlet or power input. So we just have our caravan plug. That Pretty you, dirty. You plug right in here. And when we don't use it, we have this little flat that goes over it. And that's actually never opened up or anything. So this works fine. Um, yeah, right now, we have a generator now that we don't really use um, generators in, out of gas, so I'll close that up. <laughs> and here we have our electrical system. So we pretty much just pull this out. We have um, 192 amp hours. So we have a 100 amp hour battery and a 92 amp hour battery. This one was actually in there, and then this one used to be where the starter battery was, but we took the starter battery, put it back to where it's supposed to be in the front of the car under the passenger seat and put an extra battery in here. And then we have a bunch of, this is all ambulance stuff, like the solenoid, the smart chargers, um, the distribution system to the AC, to the inside. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much where we have, it's nice having this outside of the car, that way you don't have to find space for this stuff inside. Um, although it does get pretty dirty and you do have to watch out when you go through river crossings because you don't want to flood this thing completely. <laughs> well, it was already a bit underwater once. <laughs> yeah, it was, like the water was already up to here. So yeah, it, it worked out fine. Nothing happened and yeah, just gave the box a bit of a clean. Yeah, and then you just pretty much push this back in and these things actually lock up. So you just put these two things down here and now it's locked in place. So it can't, can't come sliding back out. And this whole compartment actually locks. So you can lock this and nobody can get inside of it, which is really handy. Yeah. And that's our cabin. And on top of the van, we have a 250 watt solar panel. And we put like a little um, attachment to the, to the mounting rack where we actually um, put our surfboards on. And how did we attach the solar panel to the roof? Oh, we just glued it. <laughs> <laughs> we made a frame out of aluminum and we glued it to the roof because we didn't want to put any holes in the roof because you never know if you can completely patch them back up. And um, we've already had a problem with the leak in the roof. So we had to do all the, the gaps in the, in the side of the wall and on the top of the roof. We had to put new silicon in it, take the old silicon out, put the new one in. So yeah, we didn't want to put any extra holes into the roof, so that's why we just glued it onto there, and it's actually held fine. We haven't had any problems. We've gone, what was the fastest we've gone? Was it? Uh, 100 and, we're not going to tell them because yeah, we're it, not gonna tell you. in Australia, the maximum was 130, and that's really rare yep. to see that. And we didn't even go 130 because we <laughs> try to get good fuel economy, so we go 90. <laughs> Most of the time. But yeah. Zip can go faster. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Yeah, and at the front, the, the van came with a bull bar, which is really handy because there are lots of kangaroos on the road and usually they're silly and jump in front of your car. Yep, so that's the bull bar. We added driving lights. Most of the ambulances actually come with these attached, but they're a bit smaller. And we got these in a special buy, so we just said, why not put them on? So we have the driving lights and we have a UHF antenna here, which we don't have the aerial on it right now because I've been busy working on the car um, and I always open up the motor, the, like the hood, and then I accidentally dropped it on the old one, so the old one snapped in half. And we don't want that anymore, so yeah, we're what leaving you can the aerial inside and safe. <laughs> what you can see here is the solar panel, and that's the back of our surfboard, and a little side awning. Yep. And our toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and the moon. This is what it looks like when we set up for more than a, a one night. So usually we'll stealth camp or just stay in a spot for one night. So we won't put out this awning. We'll just pretty much stand there and cook on the side of the van. But since we've been here for a while now, we put out the awning and it's really nice because we have our little camping table out here, our camp chairs, have a drink at night. And this is what it looks like when we're cooking. What are we making for dinner, Yele? Pasta with pesto, which mm, is Patrick's favorite. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> yeah, so this is usually what it looks like when we're just 
camping somewhere, we'll cook out here. And then we'll go back inside and uh, eat at the table inside. Um, but since if we stayed a spot for more than one night, uh, and like at Cape York, we'll stay. We stayed at a spot for two nights because it's a really nice spot right next to the beach. And then we just put out the awning, set up the camping chairs and stuff, and it's really nice that way. Cheers! Woo! So if this isn't enough lighting for us, then. Yetta has her app, Ooh, and we can it. turn on some more lights. Yeah. And then also we can change the brightness. And the color, whatever you like the most. Usually the yellow or orange one is the nicest. And then we dim it a bit. And then we can have a nice dinner and movie night. Yeah. Yeah.